Today we're going to be working on some more spoons. I have something to show you all real quick before we get really started. As you can see, this is that last kind of ladle that I was making. Um, now, this is not, I didn't do that all with the knife. I pushed some of that out, but unfortunately I made the same mistake that I made on the crooked handle spoon, which is that I just dug too deep with the hook knife and I made it too thin and I don't know if y'all can see but like even even here I'm able to push it in it's a little bit thicker a little too thick for me to just push through but it's still uh, very flexible which is not what I want I like it to be a little bit thicker so that it's nice and solid but today we're gonna work on on this guy Okay, so with this one in mind, I'm going to try not to do that this time, <laughs> but which is a shame because this one was turning out really nice, and with that stripe right through the middle, it would have been just gorgeous once it oiled up, it really would have made that pop, but that's firewood now, or just trash, so we're going to get going on this bad boy, and hoping that with some of like this looks darker I might be able to get some of that in there I can also see I don't know if you can tell but that coloration right there is also kind of nice so I'm gonna try and keep some of that in there but um I need to split it which I've forgotten my mallet again so I gotta go get that I have my mallet now as you can see handmade by the way and uh, obviously it's not the prettiest but since you know I had another one that was bigger heavier a little bit nicer made but I split it in half and so I thought I would make this one not as nice especially since it gets so beat up um, if I was doing you know very detail oriented like hammering very soft you can make a nicer mallet but it's just not worth it when you're using it just to smack on the axe so <clears throat> here we go this wood currently stinks it smells bad because I've had it soaking in a tub of water and when you let the water go too long it makes the wood stink now luckily with, with something like this you know with the stink from the water once it dries out the stink goes away pretty quickly and you know of course once I finish carving it I like to oil up the spoons right away and, and get them you know once they're all dried out I like to go ahead and put the oil on them so that they can start curing and be ready to go as soon as possible but with something like this you don't want to accidentally seal in some of the stink or anything like that and so I'll let it dry out completely once it's carved or roughed out and then I will go through and not go through I don't know what I'm talking about then I'll make sure that there's no stink. I'll let it sit for a few days or however many days it needs for that stink to go away. Um, but it's just a, a byproduct of, of letting it soak in the water. It gets a little stinky. Uh, there's no, like there's nothing gross about the wood. Um, sometimes the water gets pretty gross, but you just rinse the wood off, you carve off, whatever you gotta carve off. But again, keeping that wood wet helps it to stay more workable. It makes it a lot easier to carve and I need that because <laughs> this wood can be pretty tough to carve especially if it's pecan wood now I said I was gonna split this but I want it you can see this side is thinner than this side so I want to split it this way but the first thing I want to do is get this bark off because I think it'll help it split easier
not use this because this this bark does not come off as easy as some now some of that could be that it's still wet but honestly even though I was taking bark off a pretty dry piece of pecan it just clung a little bit more a lot of barks like I, I do maple a lot and if you get a good piece of maple bark or even oak bark you can just like and it peels away there so I think the water has something to do with that it could also be this little tiny guy right there that little knot that was clinging on um, that's definitely possible but yeah I think it may just be how the bark goes because I've never carved pecan before I got this this batch of pecan wood This one's maybe a little bit hard to split. So, we're gonna see though what we can do. Ooh, that guy is kind of tough. So I'm gonna just try and make a nice straight line. That way I know where I should be trying to split. Alright, so this guy's being pretty tough to split. I don't remember why I kept it this uh, large. Maybe I just didn't want to split it again or risk messing up um, messing up the, um, the log because sometimes Obviously, with a splitting mall, it's hard to do a finer, more precise split. Now, a lot of people would use a fro, and what a f sorry, one second. So, a lot of time, people will use a fro, and what a fro is is it's basically a straight handle and a blade, out. Uh, a blade that comes out straight. It would probably be about that long, actually, and you can set it on there. And it's a flat back and the sharp side is on the bottom or the blade is on the bottom the sharp side the blade is on the bottom and then you take a hammer or maul usually like this um, i said a maul you know what i'm talking about a wooden smacky thing and then you bam 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 and it helps you make nice straight splits in the wood but i don't have one of those so i use my carving axe which is probably not the best for it but it's a nice fine blade and I think it can take it. So maybe one day I'll get a fro, but probably not. might want to try and do is come on this side uh, let's see sometimes if you like this clouded against don't worry about it all right this is starting to go you can see now there's a bit of a okay this thing um, shut off on me so I don't know where y'all stopped being able to see but I split this big piece it was kind of tough it didn't split exactly like I wanted it split a little bit to the side there but I was able to do all right not too bad and um, you know, you can see both sides are not terrible. So, 
not the straightest piece of wood, but pretty straight, pretty darn good. And um, it, it stinks worse. Oh, you hear that? That's some good old Florida day, day thunderstorm coming on in. But so I'm gonna try and work on this thing to uh, to just get a good spoon blank. Uh, I always say that I'm gonna try and do multiple spoon blanks, but I never do. I always just wind up going straight for another spoon. So, but I do want to sharpen this and just on the strop, I have noticed that stropping is a lot easier than trying to use that puck and the puck is very nice in a pinch, but usually if I just strop this thing semi-often I can keep it nice and sharp with no need for that and like I said I'm just not that experienced with that puck and so I always just I never get a good angle on the blade on it and it's tough for me to keep a nice even bevel on both sides so I prefer stropping also stropping is you know just a nice cleaner sharpen I guess I don't know
what I'm doing now is I'm looking at the edge of this to try and line that up to make it, um, you know, I don't want a, a dome. I don't exactly want whatever it is, a hollow, concave or convex. I'd like it to be a straight line, but it'd be better if it's concave rather than convex. Because you know it's a lot easier than scooping with a spoon that, you know, the head of it is further back than the handle is one that's actually shaped like a U rather than a lowercase n. So just trying to get that lined up a little bit and looking a bit better because he, or it, he, uh, it looks a little bit convex a little bit like an arch that's the word I'm looking for Ooh. again always important to keep your hand out of the way of the axe same way out of the way of the knife so otherwise it's too easy to make a slip and slice the crap out of yourself Obviously, is where part of that knot was because of the way that every time I try and cut down, it chips up or it cuts really deep in and then gets caught right about there. So there's obviously some conflicting grain there, and that's okay. Sometimes that can help make a more interesting spoon, but it does make it harder to work the wood. Notice me readjust my posture some. I know you can't see all of me, but my back has been hurting me a little bit, and some of that is bad posture. So I'm trying to be very mindful of that, but it's so tough when you get in the zone and working. I'm sure some of you know that if you're really working on something, you really focus, and everything else can be hard to focus on. So you may notice me continually like straightening my back, trying to might look a little bit weird but just trying to prevent you know any seizing up of the back or anything like that or any worse problems is lower than that side so I fix that so I'm gonna try and work on this side now Man, this is 
storm is blowing in quick. I say storm, it could turn into nothing. Sometimes it does. Sometimes we just get some wind and thunder and then it's blue skies in about five minutes. We'll see what happens though. Just gotta break out that mallet. There we go.
There we go. about right for a bullet. Um, it's obviously it's got a lot of tear out. Tear out is when you get this kind of stuff where you at least I'm pretty sure that's what it's called. That's what I call it where you get those kind of strings of wood that will tear out and cause gouges. Now with a nice sharp nice sharp knife that's pretty easy to deal with. Um, and you know that's that's hard to do with the axe not because the axe is not sharp the axe is very sharp but just because all the weight on it and it's not meant for shaving off little fine pieces of wood it's obviously meant for cutting off chunks of wood so we'll do that later but for now what i want to do all right now i'm going to do this one we're going to see how that goes you can see all of that is where the wood split and then i just pulled it apart because it was so close and there's all of this so we're probably gonna have to chop all of that off so we'll see how it goes
that looks pretty good. Oh yeah, very, very shaving sharp. Again, apparently not the best metric for it, but that's what I'm gonna use for now. Oh, look at that. That's biting in a little bit better. Definitely better cuts there. Still getting some resistance, but it's just a hardwood. barely touched the corner of that axe blade on accident and cut myself a little bit but it's not bad I don't know if I cut myself all the way, oh yep, yeah, there it is there's a little blood on there but that's fine nothing bad, nothing serious these little accidents happen It's starting to rain.
this one's kind of a tough one because of all the um, valleys and stuff there. Let's see. see where it wants to tear out right there that's where if I keep going it'll just rip out a big old chunk so I gotta come back and ask the other way I'm currently getting drift on, so I'm going to move you back. All right. No, I'm still getting drift on, but it's mainly my leg, and that's okay. Hmm. Okay. So what I have is a pretty straight piece of wood. It's pretty straight or flat from here and then about on. And that I think is gonna work because what I'll do is I'll make that the head of the spoon and then I'll just carve off these parts that are not flat. And yeah, and I think that'll work. So let's see real quick what we can do with a pen. First things first. I usually like to make them about as long as wrist to elbow. I don't know if you can see that, but usually what I'll do is I'll you know, do about that. And so that'll be the cutoff point. And I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'm going to go ahead and saw. If the sound is really bad, I may just cut it out. Because if we're being very honest with you, it is not worth the effort of having to separate this part from the rest of the clip and edit that separately just for the sound of it. So. Oh, <laughs> oh,
for a cooking spoon. I usually do about five fingers to the head, maybe four, we'll see. Yeah, four will probably be fine. And let's see, I want to try and do about middle there. Maybe about there. And then I'll do the same. Eh, I don't need to do it there. I want that to be the center line. So right there on that, I think it looks nice. And you know what? That'll about work for a straight edge. There we go. That's a nice straight line down the middle. So, let's see. That's about right. And we do a straight line across. I'm going to draw. So, not really bring it far out there. Hmm. So that is kind of goofy looking, but you know what? I think it'll be all right. This is not the most fun part, is trying to get it, you know, nice and symmetrical. And then, since I want this to be one of the offset cooking spoons, I'm going to bring this out, out there. good that looks good I think I think that'll be all right um, usually I make this about a finger wide um, and I do that somewhat so that I can make like a nice You know, make a nice um, thick handle at first, and then I will take it down from there. But doing that nice, like thick handle at first allows me to. Wow, gosh, that's way too thick. Uh, that's okay. I'll keep it for now. But basically, doing that allows me to then take it down round it out i can make that like the very edge and then make a nice like circle circular not circular circular handle and hopefully that'll be good so now what i'm going to do i'm going to take the saw and i'm going to saw it into the thinnest part which is going to be right at that corner. And what that will allow me to do is split wood off and get almost the entire handle. Uh, I'll go a little bit higher. I think I might be a little bit far down on that. So usually what I'll do is I'll make it cut close right about to where I want it. And then I will even it out so that it's the same top and bottom. And doing this 
in this order before I thin out the bottom here and everything, taking that chunk off will make it so much easier because I'm not taking off the higher parts here in order to get to the middle where I need to go. I'm just taking off the wood that I need to take off. Um, and so it is helpful to do it this way to kind of split off what you can. Okay, now I'll line it up on the other side and I'll do the same. I don't have nearly as far to go on that side. That looks like we're good right there. So then I'll take this little guy and I'll go a little bit further out from the line because obviously it does not always split as you want it. In fact, because there's a knot right there, I'm going to go pretty far out from that line. I'm going to just see how that splits. Oh, nice. Okay, that's splitting pretty straight down. So I think that'll work. good that's pretty good so now we'll do the other side the other side should split pretty straight as well but I'm going to go a little ways out just to make sure because it's already at the point at which it should be in the back. I'll show you what I mean in just a second. Okay. So, kind of like you can see, right there it's already met that saw line at the back so I didn't want to go straight down again because I didn't want it to split into where the spoon head is supposed to be because I want to be able to decide kind of how thick I want that to be when the time comes instead of having it decided for me so yeah 